Welcome to this clip dealing with various aspects of the pre-processing of remote sensing images. In this clip I will first discuss various factors that influence the acquisition of remote sensing images. Subsequently, different steps in the pre-processing of remote sensing images will be presented and finally different product levels will be discussed. Many factors have an influence on remote sensing image acquisition and they are listed here. These factors should be corrected as much as possible, particularly when you want to compare different images in time or from different sensors. The radiometric calibration deals with the radiometric characteristics of a sensor, transforming the measured digital numbers of a pixel into radiances. For most sensors, this is a linear transformation, including a so-called bias, A0, and a gain factor, A1. Graphically, this is illustrated in this response function between digital number and radiance, which is different for each spectral band of a sensor. These correction factors are mostly determined in the lab before launch of a satellite and available in the metadata of an image. The position of the Sun in relation to the Earth determines the incoming irradiation at the top of the atmosphere. It varies as a function of time of the day and of the year, and it depends on the location on Earth. Since the orbit of Earth around the Sun is elliptical, the varying distance between Earth and Sun is also important. However, the required corrections can be calculated exactly for every position every moment in the year. The percentage of cloud cover can help in judging whether an image is useful or not. The left image shows considerable cloud cover, but a large portion of this image still seems useful for deriving information on, for example, land use patterns on the Earth. In the right image, cloud cover is much more scattered, making it useless for most land-related applications. Without going into too much detail, there are a number of fluxes important in describing the atmospheric influence for optical images. First, the incoming irradiation from the sun can be separated in a direct flux, A, without interference by the atmosphere, and a diffuse flux that reaches the surface after having interactions in the atmosphere, indicated with B. The latter is called skylight. Part of the incoming flux even can be scattered in the atmosphere, indicated by C here, and back towards the sensor without ever being uh, in contact with the surface. This is called air light. Similarly, radiation reflected at the Earth's surface again has to travel through the atmosphere towards the sensor. On this path, also interaction with molecules in the atmosphere may occur. Interaction of radiation with the atmosphere can occur according to two mechanisms. First, solar light can be scattered in various directions by air molecules and aerosols in the atmosphere. Aerosols are fine particles like haze, dust, air pollutants or smoke. Secondly, absorption of radiation can occur, for instance by water vapor in the atmosphere. In atmospheric correction procedures one tries to correct for this. A simple method for atmospheric correction is an empirical, statistical method using known, uh, stable reflectance targets in an image, like a lake or a desert. A more complex method is using radiative transfer models, which model the processes in the atmosphere in much detail, and which make use of meteorological data describing the conditions of the atmosphere during the image acquisition. Geometric distortions in a remote sensing image can be caused, for instance, by the curvature of the Earth, the rotations of the Earth during image acquisition, panoramic distortions towards the edge of an image or the topography of the terrain. These are systematic distortions that are mostly already corrected at the ground receiving station before sending the image to the user. Remaining systematic errors and particularly random errors mostly need to be corrected by the user who is analyzing the image. For this, ground control points, sometimes in combination with the digital elevation model, can be used. At the right, we see an example of a geometric correction applied to an airborne image that was severely influenced by roll of the aircraft. Image pre-processing can be seen as a preparatory phase to improve image quality before the actual image analysis is starting. Common steps in pre-processing are radiometric calibration, geometric correction and atmospheric correction. We can put this as one of the links in the whole remote sensing processing chain from image acquisition to pre-processing, image analysis, production of variables and products, finally to the application. Another way of looking at this processing chain is to talk about product levels, as is often done nowadays. We should start with the raw image at top, 
perform a radiometric calibration yielding product level 1, as it is called for many sensor systems. Subsequently, after performing geometric and atmospheric correction, we reach product level 2, being the end of the pre-processing. At product level 3, we often have vegetation indices or even biophysical products, like a map with biomass. On this slide, we see three examples of images before, shown at the top, and after atmospheric correction, shown at the bottom. Thin clouds, haze and other atmospheric influences have been removed, yielding images of better quality and with more contrast. In this clip, you have learned the importance of image pre-processing in the remote sensing pre-processing chain, improving the quality of the images for further analysis. The radiometric calibration, geometric and atmospheric correction have been discussed as main processing steps. Finally, several product levels have been discussed. Mm -hmm.